I'm I'm sorry, but what? Mm, yo, what's happening, people? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. Everything popped off last night when I was soundly in bed reading my book. Chelsea transfer world chaos ensued. Just quickly, off the dome piece, Samu Amoradian, deal has collapsed despite being in London, despite having the here we go from Fabrizio Romano. He's reportedly devastated, so obviously was sold on the move in the end. And uh, now multiple reports linking Joao Felix back to Chelsea. Of course, he had a great um, time at Chelsea on a six-month loan. Perhaps the... I don't know, the terms weren't so favourable with us in terms of loan fee and wages, but maybe, maybe he could be available for a more affordable price. Of course, he was at Barcelona. Uh, I think he liked it there, but Barcelona are notoriously broke. (laughs) Is this a good idea? This feels a bit mental. I mean, just recently we were talking about, "Mm, we haven't, you know, we've had sort of exciting signings in terms of potential, you know, kids with that could make it. We've got no dopamine it's in the brain. We've got no shirt sellers. Well, how about George Mendes comes to town, meets up with Chelsea again, and slam dunks Pedro Neto and possibly Joao Felix down our throats as a Portuguese double. There's your dopamine hit. I'm not saying it's a great idea. We're going to get into that, and you bet you're behind, mate. I'm going to be ex-valuing Joao Felix's stats on this video, and we're going to try and navigate through whatever happened last night, which is clearly mental. So, with that being said, thank you for joining me. Thank you for supporting the content as always. I see it, and I love you very much. Um, wow, this is freaking wild, bro. Uh, yeah, thanks for liking, thanks for subscribing. Let's get into it. Fabrizio Romano said this and pinned this. Exclusive, Chelsea and Atletico Madrid are now discussing Joao Felix as part of of the Conor Gallagher deal. Let me just turn my fan on. Now, like me, you might be thinking, well, the Gallagher deal is done. It is in isolation, but there is, there is like separate transfers seem to be linked. I guess for financial reasons, one player goes one way, one player goes the other way. They look like isolated deals, agreed fees, but they're not completed until they're both completed. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? And uh, that seemingly is the case here. Uh, Samu Omoridian deal collapsing and the two clubs don't want Gallagher and Julian Alvarez deals to collapse too. Uh, Yes, so of course, Samu Omoridian to Chelsea has collapsed, the striker. Uh, Mark Hugh might be feeling positive about this, but don't worry because Victor Osterman's name's not gone away. And actually, it's been spoken about even more. Chaos. 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 But fun. Now, Joao Felix is being discussed with Georges Menge. In London, who came to... Oh, this is just chicken oriental. Now, all right. (laughs) I'm going to cite some tweets from Twitter account at CFCPYS for um, aggregation um, stuff here, because he's been up in the night looking at what journalists say. He's first quoted some guy called uh, Marcus Benito, who actually at first I didn't believe at all because he's part of that Spanish El Chiringuito TV, which is a bit of a meme. But he did break the story, so clearly he knows what's going on with Samu Amoradian. He said this, Chelsea changed the conditions of the Samu deal last minute. Samu is described as devastated. Chelsea now won Osimen as main goal. Ossimen. I mean, obviously we've been linked with Ossimen loosely, but but this is wild. Okay, so I'm going to read you a short article now from um or from the Athletic on uh, Joao Felix. So I'll wait one moment. A few more tweets from uh, CFC PYS. He says, uh, Fabrizio Romano also said, the Samu deal is off. It collapsed. It's not happening. We will explain why in the next few days, but there are big issues in recent days. He goes on to say, Samu Omoridian is, of course, now in London, but he's got to fly back to Spain tomorrow, which is now today. His plane is booked. Atletico Madrid could sell, not loan, sell Joao Felix to Chelsea on a permanent transfer, and they are discussing that in London right now. Oh my god. Uh, Joao Felix was super positive about his time in Chelsea. 
And his experience, he was very happy, of course. He did look quite happy, even though Chelsea, that was an insane six months loan, wasn't it? He was of, um, he was playing for Graham Potter, which probably wasn't the most inspirational managerial experience of his life. It was also that crazy six months where there was no space for players in the dressing room. But he did seem to like it. He didn't start towards the end. Frank Lampard used him as a sub, but he did like it in, uh, in London. Uh, he, of course, speaks really fluent English and... Um, you know, he knows Chelsea's a big club as well. Let's go on. Let's keep reading these tweets. Chelsea owners and directors have, were very happy with Joel Felix when he was at Chelsea, but the deal never happened because they backed Pochettino, who didn't want him. Pochettino didn't want Joel Felix, who was appointed the successor for Graham Potter, of course, after the Frank Lampard uh, temporary reign. Um, and they were like, look, we had this six-month loan with Joel. We really liked him. Do you like him? He says, no, thank you. So that was up to Poch. And maybe that was the right decision. <clears throat> Super agent George Mendes is uh, is in London. He brought Pedro Neto to Chelsea and he met with Chelsea. And that's why they started talking about Felix. If you remember, guys, George Mendes has a great relationship. <laughs> he has a relationship with Chelsea. The first thing Todd Bowley did when he bought Chelsea, he asked who the movers and shakers are. He asked, like, how can I get into Portuguese football? Someone pointed him in the direction of George Mendes. Uh, he whined and dined him. Hopefully he didn't 69 him but I'm not judging. And, uh, <laughs> and yeah, he's, we've got this sort of in now. Um, he's also saying he's hearing the Gallagher and Alvarez deals are still happening, and this is Fabrizio Romano, but they need a player to go to Chelsea. So Gallagher needs to... They still want him to go to Atletico. They still want... The, I don't... I'm, I'm not going to present for a second, guys, how I understand how this love triangle works of Gallagher to Atletico... Uh, Julian Alvarez to Atletico and a player going to Chelsea. There's obviously accounting reasons for that that I don't quite understand, but they need a player to go to Chelsea. Enter, enter, Joao Felix. Uh, Romano goes on his playback channel and says, Chelsea are still interested in Osimhen, but they have been very clear. It needs to be a loan on the current salary, and the, no, sorry, it needs to be a loan, and the current salary would remain an issue. So they would need to find common ground. Yeah. <laughs> I do think we're in a strong position with Osimhen. I've said that before, but... We'll see the, how the story develops. Uh, again, on his playback, he says Chelsea have so many offensive players. If they were close a deal for Felix, there would surely be some outgoings. He talks about Madweke as well, and Sterling could both go if Felix is signed. Uh, I don't think Chelsea would start a conversation or, with an agent or players without the green light from Enzo Maresca. Enzo Maresca himself has spoken about every, he believes every coach needs to be uh, asked about a player before they sign him. So Enzo Maresca, who's going to be busy planning for Man City, is probably having some very serious conversations right now. All right, let's jump over to the Athletic. Uh, oh, sorry, by the way, if my fan's hitting the microphone. I was just so hot in here. Uh, I haven't aired out my office yet. Um, so this is uh, Guillermo Ray. Excuse my pronunciation for that journalist. Chelsea have begun talks with Atletico Madrid regarding the possibility of signing Portugal forward Joao Felix. The two clubs have been in close contact in recent weeks and of course agreed separate deals. I'm, I'm putting that in inverted commas. Separate deals for Conor Gallagher and Samu Amoradorin. Uh, the Premier League club's inquiry for Felix comes after Samu's proposed move to Stamford Bridge collapsed on Sunday evening last night. Gallagher is still expected to join Madrid uh, in the coming days after agreeing to a transfer. Uh, Felix previously spent six months on loan at Stamford Bridge, of course, um, scoring four goals and 16 appearances, which isn't bad considering a lot of those appearances were off the bench. I wonder how many starts it was, four goals and how many starts in a mental Chelsea side during that second half. Uh, and bearing in mind, that was the side that couldn't score goals, that scored a goal a game all season. <laughs> so he did pretty well considering there was no chances being created. So that was during half the second half of the 22-23 campaign. The Portugal international is under contract till 2029 with Simeone. He's fallen out of um, favour with head coach, so they, they want him gone. The 24-year-old has been given an extended summer break after his Euro exploits to resolve his future. Um, one second. And we back. Uh, Chelsea's Premier League rivals, rivals, excuse me, are they, I guess they are rivals, Aston Villa, have already expressed this interest in signing the forward with head coach Unai Emery, a long-term admirer of his talents. Uh, <laughs> Atletico signed Felix in the summer of 2019 for 126 million euros. That was absolutely insane, wasn't it? The fourth highest transfer fee in the in football in all time after scoring 20 goals in his debut season for Benfica's first team squad. 
After three frustrating years at Atletico, Felix moved to Chelsea on loan, and the Premier League side opted against making him a permanent move for, uh, for last summer. Again, to reiterate, that's been reported that it was Pochettino that said no, but the sporting directors liked him. He spent the entirety of last campaign on loan at Barcelona, scoring 10 goals in 44 first-team appearances. Felix has been capped 41 times for Portugal. Uh, yeah, okay, wow. So, Joao Felix is a good footballer. He's an entertainer, he's exciting, he's got quality, and he's got that ability to link up with players. Excuse me. Um, we have been frustrated at Chelsea for a while now. And signing good players, but maybe not the sexiest of players. Conor Gallagher's a superstar. It's Conor Gallagher. Well, he's a superstar, no offense to him. But Cole Palmer is a superstar. But I was excited about him. A few more, but not many people were. Nico Jackson, we were like, what? You know, Nonny, we were like, what? We, we, we were like, who are these guys? Do you know what I mean? We'd been used to start making Chelsea signings. Now, whatever your position is on the ownership, the sporting directors, Joel Felix and Pedro Neto are like conventionally Chelsea signings of the last 25 years. They are. Oh, 20 odd years. 20 years, 25 years, 20, you know what I mean. A long time, 20 years. So, look, I wouldn't, I wouldn't look at this Chelsea team and be like, wow, we need Joao Felix. We're going to look at his stats in just a second, guys, for those of you wondering when it's going to happen. Um, you know, where, when are we, it, it, I don't look at him and say, we need Joel Felix. I look at us team and say, wow, Pedro Neto, because he's only so recently, I know he didn't have that many minutes, shown, yeah, I can tear up this Premier League and just be really high octane, really high work rate, really, really make opposition defenders freak out. I love that. Joel Felix is quality, and he'll be able to link up. Like, maybe Pedro Neto, I imagine he's very excited about signing for Chelsea, but if he told him, you know, his teammate... Um, Joao Felix, who's only 24 still. So they're both 24 years old. Your Portuguese teammate will be joining you at Chelsea. He'd, he would probably be like, thank you very much. I know Joao is quality. But what kind of player is he? Let's have a look at his X value page. So here we are. Joao Felix. Here's the guy. Remember him. He's been... His player functions, his profile is 78% of a one-to-one -one explorer. And that's obviously, that's 100% of what Pedro Neto is or about that. He's also a mobile finisher, which many strikers are considered. Uh, and a chance creator. So a little bit of a chance creator. Um, his main... His, his main bigger cl player cluster key metrics here. Essentially are dribbles and open one-twos. Now, this last one here is very important. This is what I think of when I think of Joao Felix. Doing little flicks, combinations, one-twos in the box. Combining. And if you get that right, you can open stubborn defences. That's what Chelsea want to do like i said really really interestingly he is a 24 year old footballer as you can see there on the left hand side 24 very very young still he's right footed um and he can play we talked about pedro neto playing on the right maybe sometime also playing on the left well look at this this is this could be you know you could <laughs> you could play joao felix on the left um pedro neto on the right in kunku and Cole Palmer in the offensive eight behind Osimhen. <laughs> it's getting stupid now. It's come from like, I know, I'm not saying we're signing Osimhen and Joao Felix. These are just the stories I've reported on. But it's gone from, where well, we could play, you know, Jackson and maybe Mudrick who's underperformed. And suddenly it's like, oh, okay, now we've gone full football manager FIFA career mode and we've just got the Galacticos in. Uh, his spider chart here is very balanced, very, very balanced. Uh, as you can see, not great aerials, not great recoveries. You'd have to work a bit harder. But his passing is very, very strong, um, stronger than some of the other wingers we've got. And his strengths are split. Let's look at his advanced stats, shall we, for some additional context. Here we go. Um, I'm going to do per 90. Well, that's pretty darn strong, actually. Uh, Non-penalty XG. Very, very strong. Bursting out of the polar chart here, which is basically expected goals for him to score. Uh, nearly a, a goal every other game, which for a sort of attacking midfielder winger like him makes him in the top 4%, or the top, here you go, non-penalty, top 4% of all elite wingers across Europe in terms of goals to be expected scored. So he will chip in with goals. His chance creation is still very high as well. Open... Open bottom left here. The open play is uh, 86 percentile. Uh, and rather interestingly, his expected offensive value added, which of course is a um, the number of brackets 
uh, sorry, which is like essentially an aggregated stat of how how helpful you are to the attack. He's in the top nine percent of all the wingers. Let's look at progression. Bottom left here. Um, very strong in terms of expected threat, like we said. Uh, expected threats from carries, which is dribbling with the ball. Strong uh, one twos open. Very strong as you'd expect. He's good at combinational play. Yeah, he is. He's a bit of a flair player. He's a bit of a luxury player, but he is a ruddy good player. Um, is this smart? Well, I've seen a lot of people on YouTube say, yeah, it's good with signing good play young, talented players, but we need quality. We need quality. Chelsea need to sign quality. Um, just, you know, throw some money at some superstar players. And if I have no, it's almost like they've been on Twitter, the, the, these uh, Chelsea uh, sporting directors, seen the criticism going, right, what if we speak to George Mendes and bring in a couple of his superstars on his books? And they've responded, what do I think? Well, I'm very excited with Pedro Neto. Um, I don't see Joel Felix as a priority, unless, unless Sterling's definitely going. Um, unless Sterling's definitely going. Nonny Madworker goes to Newcastle, although I actually think we'll be a bit short then if we lose Sterling and Nonny, who right now are probably, apart from Neto, are starting wingers. If you lose both of them to sign Joao Felix, who's not really a conventional winger, <laughs> it leaves you in like a sort of even more difficult place profile than you were before. But uh, maybe if you get rid of Sterling, uh, I, I don't see Mudrick going. It's just he's too young, he's too much investment in him, and uh, they, they'll make too much of a loss on him. So you could say maybe alone, but I just don't see it happening personally. I think he's got another season to prove himself. So if Sterling goes, Joao Felix, look, it'll be exciting. I liked Joao Felix at Chelsea. I do. He 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 like he loved living in London. He was immediately one of the boys. I think he'd sort of you know hang out. He'd like hanging out with Nonny and everyone again. And I think they'd just be like he'd he'd slip you know straight in in terms of like um, you know I mean Neto Palmer Felix. It's exciting, but like, and like, awesome ends being discussed. It's absolutely mental. Uh, you know, it's mental. Guys, I'm going to be all over this story, so make sure when you subscribe to Football Therapy, you turn on the bell so you get notified when these uploads. Stories move incredibly quickly of Chelsea, especially late in the transfer window, and I want you guys to be the first to watch. So make sure you do uh, turn the noti bell if you want to subscribe. Just basically keep it locked to the channel so I can give you guys the updates as and when they come. Mental. See you back here soon. Peace.